Hello and welcome to module 42 of chemical kinetics and transition state theory. Uh, in the last module we discussed uh, uh, transition state theory in microcanonical ensemble. And what we uh, find in that uh, theory is we need to calculate density and sum of states. Uh, now in this module we will discuss a little bit more details on how this density of states and total number of states is calculated. Okay. So, a quick recap, the transition state theory estimate uh, comes out to be this formula where W is the total number of states. So, W dagger is a total number of states calculated at transition state excluding the reaction coordinate, E A is the activation energy and G is the density of states at energy E uh, computed in the reactant region only. Okay. Uh, so, with this formula we derived in the last module. So, today uh, we are going to discuss how to calculate this G and W. G is the density of states at energy E and W is the total number of states with energy less than equal to E. Uh, within classical mechanics we also argued uh, I think two modules ago that this W can be calculated as the volume occupied by the surface of H equal to E where H is the Hamiltonian divided by h to the power of 3n, this little h. Yeah, so, uh, this is really the way we typically will calculate w, at least if classical mechanics holds true. And to calculate g, we just differentiate w with respect to e. So, this is going to be our main strategy. So, let us see how this works. Uh, first thing before we calculate uh, these g and w, we will play our regular tricks and separate rotations from vibrations. Because as it turns out we can analyze both of them individually very well, but combined it becomes somewhat harder. So, the common trick that we again do is, uh, let us say I am trying to calculate the total number of states. So, if I want to calculate G of E, total energy and let us say the total energy is the sum of vibrational energies plus rotational energies. Translation can always be separated out exactly, so I am not considering that right now, translation is there but uh, that is exactly separable anyway. Okay. So, the G of E is nothing but the total number of states at that energy E or the density of states at that energy E. So, what I can do is I can sum over vibrational states nu, find the number of states at that Uh, energy E nu. Okay. So, I am thinking I have a total energy E and then I can uh, partition this into E nu and E r. So, uh, let us say the total energy E is this and this is let us say E nu and this is let us say E r. So, I am saying okay, if my vibrational energy is E nu, uh, well the total number of states then will be the uh, density of states at E nu multiplied by the density of states at uh, E r and then I sum over all possible combinations of uh, E nu that I can have. Instead of this E nu, I might have a different combination where E nu is equal to this and E r is equal to this. So, I sum over all possible uh, possibilities of E nu, all right. Of course, E nu is less than E. So, uh, this I just modify a little bit and state this is equal to sum over nu, G nu, E nu and G r E minus E nu. So, this is of course an approximation. Uh, what is the approximation really here? The approximation is that the rotational states and vibrational states are independent of each other. Uh, however, vibrations uh, you have excited one quanta of vibrational excitation or two quanta of vibrational excitation, it, uh, the rotations are unaffected by it. That is why I have been able to write it as a product form. 
otherwise more accurately I should include vibrational state as well into the definition of G here. So, this is ignored and that is the approximation really and that is a regular approximation we have made on many many times that rotation and vibration can be decoupled. It is usually a good approximation except for a few cases when it does not. So, our uh, goal becomes in calculating these uh, rotational uh, density and vibrational density separately which is always good. So, I will show you uh, today, uh, let us start out by looking at this uh, rotational density first. Okay. So, uh, let us look at it uh, in 1D, 3D is the same concept, it is just the math becomes slightly harder. So, we will do 1D here. So, uh, what we have to do? We have to find, we will do W e, calculate W e first and W e is nothing but 1 over h into the volume occupied by the surface h equal to e. Okay. I am saying 1 over h only because it is 1 d only. So, it is h to the power of 1. All right. So, uh, what is h? h for a 1 d rotor is nothing but p phi square over 2 i where uh, my particle is let us say constrained on a circle and this is phi. Okay, so, this is how Hamiltonian for this system is given and uh, phi goes from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so, we want to find this is equal to E. I want uh, the uh, contour corresponding to H equal to E and find the volume occupied by this contour. So, let us uh, make a plot of phi versus p phi. Uh, phi goes from 0 to 2 pi. How much does p phi goes from? Well, minus infinity to plus infinity, but we have a constraint. Our constraint is h equal to e. So, h equal to e implies p phi equal to root 2 i e plus or minus. So, if I equate these two, this is easy to see. So, I have a root of 2 i e here, I am assuming energy to be positive, e here uh, minus and phi goes from 0 to 2 pi. So, effectively you get a box like this. So, w is nothing but the area occupied by this uh, rectangle divided by h. So, w equal to area of rectangle, the shaded region divided by h. Well, area is easy to calculate. This length is 2 pi and this side is what? 2 into root 2 i e. So, area of rectangle is 2 pi into 2 root 2 i e divided by h. So, this is nothing but 2 over h bar root 2 i e. Okay. So, this is w of e. I can also calculate g of e now as d w over d e. So, this is our going to be our strategy for classical mechanics at least and remember that for rotations classical mechanics is usually very good. So, this is a pretty good approximation on what we are doing. So, this will be equal to 2 over h bar root 2 i uh, into half of 1 over root e. So, this is nothing but 1 over h bar 2 i over So, I am not doing the quantum version here right now, but classical mechanics is usually holds very good anyway. Okay. So, now let us look at vibrations. Vibrations quantum mechanics, classical mechanics is not good. One must do a quantum treatment. So, in this module I will try to also convince you that that is in fact correct. But let us start with the quantum version right. and then we will do, it, do the classical version as well and see how different they are. So, uh, let us say I have, uh, I have to first get my pen, let there be 
uh, n oscillators with frequencies omega 1, omega 2 till omega n. So, what is the energy of this? Uh, let us say the quant corresponding quantum number are n 1, n 2 till n n. So, the energy for this uh, set of quantum numbers will be equal to sum over i h bar omega i n i plus half okay, i equal to 1 to capital N. So, also energy of one oscillator is h bar omega into n plus half. So, I am simply summing over all possible uh, different modes, different free oscillators. So, the idea is very simple W of let us say E naught is nothing but uh, total combinations of n 1 n n such that E of this n 1 to n n is less than E naught. So, it, it you really literally count it for all possible n 1s uh, to n n's such that the energy the harmonic oscillator energies comes out to be less than the desired energy. Okay. So, we will see one example so that things become clear. So, the uh, question statement is that we have let us say only 3 oscillators with frequencies 800, 1000 and 1400 wave numbers. Calculate the total number of states with energy less than or equal to 2500 wave numbers above the 0 point energy. So, let us ex exclude the 0 point energy. Okay, so, 2500 wave numbers above the 0 point energy. So, my energy is uh, going to be h bar uh, omega 1 plus h bar omega 2, uh, I am sorry I have forgotten my n 1s. So, I have 3 quantum numbers here n 1, n 2, n 3. This will be h bar omega 1 n 1 plus h bar omega 2 n 2 plus h bar omega 3 n 3. Okay. Uh, I have not written plus half because that is a 0 point energy. So, this is the energy above the 0 point energy. All right. uh, h bar, so let me just put in the numbers here 800 n 1 plus 1000 n 2 plus 1400 n 3. So, we have to literally calculate all possible combinations of n 1, n 2 and n 3 such that the energy remains less than or equal to 2500 wave numbers. So, we are going to manually calculate it, there is no formula now. n 1, n 2, n 3, n 4, n 5, n 6, n 7, energy and we will count only those combinations for which E is less than 2500. So, the lowest one is of course 0. I can put 1 quanta here, if I put n 1 equal to 1, n 2 equal to 0 and n 3 equal to 0, I will get 800 wave numbers. I can put a 0 1 0 that is 1000 wave numbers still less than 2500, 0 0 1 1400 wave numbers still less than 2500 wave numbers. Then let us start putting 2 quanta, let me put 2 quanta here, then I will get 1600 wave numbers. Uh, what I can I do next? I can put 1 and 1 and 0 that will give me 1800 wave numbers. Uh, what do I do next? Let me put 1 0 1. Uh, act, sure, that is 2200 wave numbers. I have actually forgotten 1. So, let me make another table here. Okay. So, it is laborious, you have to just do go ahead and do it. I can also put have, could have put this way, I would have gotten 2000 wave numbers. Finally, uh, I can do 300 0, 0, that is 2400 wave numbers or I can do 0, 011 1, that is also 2400 wave numbers. 
okay, so, uh, these two are degenerate. But they represent different states nonetheless, so we count them equally. Okay. So, the total number is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. W of E or W of 2500 is equal to 10. Okay. So, this is how you calculate W quantum mechanically. Uh, often when you have large number of oscillators or large amount of energy, what you can do is to use a program to do this for you. You do not have to do it manually. So, you can easily construct a program or you can find a program written by somebody else which will do this exact job for you. But this is what will always happen, this mathematics. Okay. Now, let me also emphasize upon you what would have happened if I calculated this uh, uh, W uh, classically. Okay, maybe I am uh, being a fool, maybe I have uh, I am doing all this laborious work for no reason. Classically I can get an analytical expression and just use that. So, let us see what would have happened. So, classically my H now is what? It is well P1 square over 2m plus half let me uh, write 1 omega 1 square x1 square plus P2 square over 2m2 plus half m2 omega 2 square x 2 square plus dot 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 p some I have n oscillators x n square. So, again I will play the same trick I will say h is equal to e and this is some n dimensional space a huge space, but it does not matter I have this huge space in which I have a contour of h equal to e. And I simply have to find the volume occupied by this contour that is still my general recipe however large n is even if I cannot draw the figure even if I cannot imagine the figure. Uh, for this uh, let me just rewrite this in a different form. Uh, the form is P1 square over 2 M1 E root 2 M1 E square plus X1 square divided by I am of course looking at this formula and trying to get it in that particular format square root square plus dot 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 plus p n square divided by uh, root 2 m n e square plus uh, x n square divided by 2 e by m n omega n square square root oh my god I cut it off this was a brutal beheading of 2 e huh. is equal to 1 uh, I have forgotten to write this is equal to 1. So, for this ellipsoid the volume is given to be this it is a mathematical formula that we can assume. So, uh, all we have to do is to use this formula. So, volume uh, G is volume divided by h to the power of n. So, volume will be pi to the power of n into uh, these a1 into a2 into a3 where a1 a2 are here. So, this is my a1, this is my a2 dot dot dot, this is my a, this is a2n. I have two n variables. I have p1 comma x1 comma p2 comma x2 till pn comma xn. So, I have 2n. Okay. So, that is why I have a 2n here. So, pi to the power of n into root 2 m1 e into root 2 e over m1 omega 1 square dot 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 root 2 m n e root 2 e divided by m n omega n square divided by n factorial. Okay. Uh, masses happily cancelled. So, I get pi to the power of n I forgot my h Planck will be angry with me uh, and here I get 2 e to the power of n. Yeah, I have 2 e uh, 
2 this this thing is 2e square root of 2e into square root of 2e n times. So, 2e to the power of n divided by product of i of omega i. Okay, so, I have omega 1 square here omega 1 square square root is omega 1 and it is simply a product. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, divided by h to the power of n n factorial. So, I will just write it in a form that is uh, more amenable to us. This I will write as e to the power of n divided by uh, n factorial into product of see carefully what I am doing uh, h bar into omega i. So, I notice I have here uh, this is pi into 2 by h to the power of n. You see this constant h 2 pi I have taken them out written it in this form this is nothing but 1 by h bar to the power of n and I put 1 h bar for each omega i. Omega i is feel lonely so I have to provide them with h bars. Okay. So, I get this expression. So, this is what g of e finally is for me. Okay. Uh, while I am at it, oh I forgot I have put s here instead of n, uh, I have been using n so, so far. So, let me just in my practice I was using s. Okay. Uh, while I am at it, let me also pr just provide you what g of e will be. g of e is nothing but dw over de, this we will need in the next module. So, I am just doing it right now. So, this is equal to okay. So, just an extra fact for you that we will use in the next module. All right. So, let us calculate the same problem. We have three uh, modes with frequencies 800, 1000, and 1400. And I ask you now calculate the classical number of states with energy less than 2500 wave numbers. So, you remember we got 10 for quantum. Let us use this formula now and uh, see what we get now. So, W will be 2500 cube here S or N is 3 divided by 3 factorial into product of the frequencies 800 into 1000 into 1400. Okay. So, note that this is dimensionless, I have 2500 wave number uh, cube and these are all wave numbers. So, this cancels out that is nice and then so I can simply plug it on a calculator. I did it earlier and I got 2.32. So, you see W quantum was 10 almost 5 times or 4 times more than the classical version. So, the classical W is not a good idea. We should do a quantum W. Okay. Uh, we will discuss a little bit more of this in the coming modules. Uh, this is a famous mistake actually made by RRK. So, uh, by R and R by Rice and Ramsperger, Kessel actually corrected it. All right. So, in summary what we have looked today is how to calculate this uh, density and sum of states. Uh, we start out by separating out the rotational and vibrational density of states. Uh, for 1D rotational we showed that the classical mechanics is typically good and you can calculate W as 2 over h bar root 2 i e. Quantum uh, vibrational uh, quantum version is that you simply count the number of states. It is laborious, but that is the right way of doing it. The classical version nonetheless is e to the power of s divided by s factorial into product of frequencies. Thank you very much. Thank you.